Hey class, um, in this video we're going to do a walkthrough of the number 2 problem on MindTab in chapter 3. Uh, so number 2 dealing with our production possibility frontier and also the difference between the absolute advantage and compared advantage. So first let's start with our production possibility frontier. Now um, the question says uh, Alex and Becky are farmers. Each owns 12 acres of land. Uh, the following table shows the amount of rye and a corn each farmer can produce per year on a given acre. Each, far each farmer chooses whether to devote all acres to producing rye or corn, or to produce rye on some of their land and corns on the, on the rest. So here is the table over here. We have uh, rye production and corn production. Now these numbers over here, it shows you how much each farmer can produce per acre, so bushels per acre for um, for Alex is 18 for rye, and then 6 bushels corn per acre, and then back is 28 and 7. Um, to draw the production possibility frontier, what, do we, what we need to know first is how much of each production can they have at maximum. So in, in another word is how much uh, Alex can produce at maximum of number of rice and then maximum number of corns. Um, so to find the maximum number of production, we need to do a little calculation. Um, so let's start. Let's do on this Excel worksheet. Um, so for Alex, Alex can produce 18 bushels per acre. Uh, he has 12 acre of land. So the maximum uh, amount of rye that Alex can produce, you're going to use 12 times 18, and then that will give you answer of 216. So this is the maximum amount of rye uh, Alex can, can produce. And then for corn, do the same calculation. But for now, corn, Alex can only produce 6 bushels per acre, but against 12 acres. So 6 times 12, uh, you're going to have 72. For Becky, Becky's calculation. So Becky, every acre, he can produce 28 bushels of rye, uh, still 12 acres. And so 12 times 28, the so maximum Becky can be produced, that will give us let me say 28 times 12, that's going to be 136. And then for corn, so 7 bushels, um, 12 acres, um, that's going to be 7 times 12, that should be 84. So this is the maximum production each farmer has. And with these numbers, we can show this on the production possibility frontier. Uh, let's go back over here. We're going to use blue color for Alex and purple for Becky. So let's do Alex first. Now back on our table, uh, we find out that Alex, the maximum he can produce is 218 bushels of uh, rye. So let's drag this line over here, um, 218, and then on the vertical axis. It's gonna uh, 216. I'm sorry, 216, and then vertical will be 72. So 72 for corns. Okay, so this will be Alex uh, production possibility frontier. And then for Becky, here's the number again for Becky. You have 236 uh, bushels of rye and 84 bushel of corn. So Becky uh, purple line. So we'll go to three. Was it 336? Yes. So 336, and then uh, 84. 84 for uh, for corn. So this is the production possibility curve for, for both farmers. And then let's go to the next section. So next part of the question asking um, who has the absolute advantage production of rye and who has absolute advantage production of corn. Now what you need to remember about this thing called absolute advantage, absolute advantage is that this is whoever can produce more of the good or whoever is more efficient in this goods production, this farmer or this person will have an absolute advantage in this production. So according to our table, Becky is more efficient in production for rye because for Becky he can produce 28 bushels per acre, Alex only 18. So Becky will have an absolute advantage in production for rye. So let's go back over here. So we're gonna choose Becky in the first space. And then next for Alex, I'm sorry, next for corn. For corn, Alex can produce six bushels and Becky seven bushels. So again, Becky is more efficient. So I'm going to say Becky has an absolute advantage in production for 
coins as well. Also, what you need to remember about this absolute advantage is that absolute advantage is possible to have one party to have two absolute advantage. So it's okay to have one party with two two advantage, but that only goes with absolute advantage. Now, for the other one, for the comparative advantage, for comparative advantage, it's only one con one one party one advantage. Okay. Now, next um, next part of question. So, Alex, opportunity cost for producing one bushel coins how much? Now, we need to find our opportunity cost. To find the opportunity cost, what you need to know is how much will cost Alex, or how much corn will cost, will cost Alex to produce one bushel of rye, or vice versa. How much rye will cost Alex to produce one bushel of corn? Um, the easiest way to do this problem, to this to do this type of question, is to find the four prices first. Now, this is how I want to do this. Um, to find the four prices, we're going to find out what's the price of each good by each person. So first, the price of uh, Rai, the Alex, and then the price of corn by Alex, and then next is the price of Rai by Becky, and the last one is the price of corn by Becky. So for the price of rye for uh, Alex and also price of corn for Alex, um, we're going to look at Alex production possibility frontier, so which is the blue line over here. So for Alex, Alex has two points on this line. Um, basically the first one over here is the one on the left where it says 72 bushel corns and zero, um, zero rye and then the other point is right here where it says 216 bushel of rye and zero corn. So for Alex, he has a choice. He can either produce 216 rye or 72 bushels. So when you're looking for the price of rye over here, uh, what you need to do, we're going to do a basic fraction, a very simple fraction. And then for the fraction, we're going to put the maximum number of rye production Alex has on the bottom. So Alex can produce 216 rye. And then we're going to keep the the, uh, the maximum corn production on the top, and again produce 72 bushel of corn. And then we do the simplification, uh, 72 over 216, that should give you 1 over 3. Now don't forget the label, so it's 1 over 3 corn. So for Alex, to produce every 1 bushel of rye, it will cost him 1 third of a corn. And then next, to find the price of corn in Alex, um, it's also the same calculation. But we're gonna now we're gonna put the price at the maximum number of core on the bottom. So keep this in mind uh, when you're looking for the four prices, whichever price you're looking for, put those numbers on the bottom, and then the other good goes on top. So we're gonna put 72 corn on the bottom over here, and then 216 right on top. So simplify this, give you three right. So for Alex to produce one corn cost him three right, and then next Becky. Back here again, we're going to do the fraction again. So we're looking for the price of rye. Um, now since we're looking for rye price, we're going to use Becky's rye maximum production on the bottom. So Becky can produce a maximum, how much did we say it was? Uh, 336, okay. So Becky can produce a maximum 336, 336 uh, rye. And then on the top, we're going to put corns over here. So 84 corns. And simplify this will become 1 over 4 corn. And then next for corn production, we're going to put corns on the bottom now. So there will be 84 corns over here. And then 336 rice on top. So simplify this will give you 4 rice. So these are the four prices. Um, now, now let's go back to answer our question. Let me do it this way. Okay, so Alex opportunity cost of one bushel of corn, which we have over here. So opportunity cost for Alex, one bushel of corn, there'll be three rye. So three bushel of rye. And then next, whereas Becky's opportunity cost of producing one bushel of 
to see. One bushel of corn is how much? So for Becky, one bushel of corn, that's the bottom calculation over here. Um, that's 